thanks everybody for coming. Um, my name is Doug Westhoff. I'm with Brown Shoe Company. I'm not with Dell, not affiliated with Dell or VMware or anybody. I am a, a customer. Um, they've asked me to present this just because I've been running a full VDI um, production for the last, a little over two and a half, or a little over two years since May of 2008. So um, I would like to say that I'm an engineer. I don't normally get up in front of people. I don't like slide decks. I like actually playing around with real stuff. So, uh, and I know it's late afternoon, so I'm gonna try to kind of blow through the boring stuff. Then we can kind of play around with the real stuff. Uh, we're gonna look at our, or my uh, uh, production environment. We have around 1,200 uh, desktops, virtual desktops in production. And also I have a view 4.5 environment spun up that we're gonna play around with. Uh, it is actually attached to our production SAN as well. So you gotta get to play around with all that. We'll look at the SAN, look at how it's running, everything. And also during this, uh, if there's any questions or anything, uh, like I said, I've been running this in production for a little over two years. So anything learned, anything pains we went through, uh, you know, stuff like that, you know, please feel free to ask and tell you what we learned. So anyways, uh, like I said, I'm with Brown Shoe Company. Uh, we were founded in 1878. We're a multi-billion dollar corporation. Um, we own uh, all the famous footwear stores, Shoes.com, Via Spiga, Vera Wang, uh, Dr. Scholl's, Buster Brown, stuff like that. So, uh, Also, uh, for anyone who asks questions, I have uh, coupons for 25% off Shoes.com. So if you raise your hand up, you'll get one of those. <laughs> but you have to ask a question. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, fine, that was a question. Wait till after the. <laughs> um, but if you ask a question and you stump me, you don't get one. So you have to ask an easy question. Um, so I was just kind of going to run through our history, how we got started, why we went to virtual desktops, um, and then kind of show, you know, talk about our production, our, our environment, what we have now, um, kind of some pains that we went through along the way and some different stuff, and then we'll. Uh, get into the, the more fun stuff. So I'm just going to bore you in the beginning and then hopefully wake you up in the end. Um, so basically, uh, my boss and his boss got together and, and they were talking about, you know, traditional desktops and, and, you know, they did a refresh every three to four years and just kind of thinking there had to be a better way to do the, the whole desktop refreshing and just desktops in general. So that's where they kind of, uh, you know, heard about VDI uh, and uh, the fact that you could do that and, and not have to uh, maintain them the same way as, as PCs and, and update different stuff and kind of just a, a way to uh, uh, do a better job at it, I guess. Um, so also look at a, a better way to update the users uh, to a new desktop. Like I said, I don't like slides. So uh, the benefits of uh, VDI, um, enabling thin clients at the endpoint, um, improving the security. Uh, if you remember back whenever Katrina hit, there was a lot of uh, stores that were, you know, where looting went on and stuff, and anyone who had actually a, a computer that was in the store that had credit card information on it or whatever that was stolen, you know, that was a big hassle that they had to go through legally later. If you have a virtual desktop with just a thin client in there, if something happens, all the data is actually stored back in the central location, so much more secure. Um, time to deploy, I mean, you know, we went, where it used to take about an hour and a half to spin up an image on a desktop, take it to the end user, um, plop it down. You know, we took that down to about 15 minutes, and that's, most of that's just unboxing the thin client and monitor and stuff. Um, so our infrastructure, back in May of 2008, we started off with uh, uh, five Dell 805s. Um, we had uh, two broker servers sitting behind an F5 for active-active redundancy. And uh, at the time, we had uh, shared storage, which uh, was on uh, EMC fiber channel SAN. And we went through many pains with this, uh, even though I mean, we upgraded everything. And, and what we found out was because it was shared storage, uh, every time that a, a SQL server would kick off or a backup would kick off or you know, anything would happen, the end user would feel it. So that was, and I'll talk more about that later, but that was one of the pains we went through. Um, 
in the very beginning, we started off with a, a pilot of a call center and a distribution center out in Chino, uh, and some SAP developers at the time, we were uh, putting in SAP, so it was kind of a way that we could give them a more secure desktop that was more tailor-fitted toward them and uh, uh, keep it more secure in, in our data centers whenever they're hitting our SAP servers and stuff. And so that was kind of the pilot and how it started. Today, our environment looks a little bit different. Uh, we, our entire call center is 100% VDI. All our SAP developers uh, all run on VDI. Um, the training room, so around the campus, we have about 150 uh, actual physical uh, seats. And then within that, we can spin up you know, 150 for if we want to train 150 people on one image, or we can spin up 20 images of one department, 150 of another department, or whatever we want, and tailor fit it toward that department and actually do the training for tailor fitted toward them. Um, end users, you know, there's about 50, actually there's more than that now. IS, there's probably 30, and they all have about a one-to-one -one image. Um, we're moving into more of the corporate purchasing department and stuff, uh, no, corporate users. We're doing a proof of concept right now over in China, so I have an ESX server sitting in China, getting ready to spin up a pilot, or doing a pilot over there. Um, and uh, our distribution centers, uh, all our distribution centers are 100% virtual, um, running roughly 500 thin clients throughout them all, which I'll talk about here a little bit more here in a minute. Um, so our infrastructure now is, uh, it's Vue 3.1. Uh, I was going to upgrade it to 4.0, but whenever I got it, by the time I finished upgrading all the servers and virtual center, I was told that 4.5 was getting ready to come out, so we decided to hold off until that was gonna come out, and then it got pushed, and we, I haven't got around to really updating anything yet, so as soon as I get home, I'll upgrade to 4.5, which I already have an environment spun up to, uh, so I can do it as soon as I get there. Um, we have uh, eight Dell 805s, uh, eight Dell 710s. Um, each of them, and I'll show you later, we'll actually look at the servers. They're running anywhere from 80 to 120 virtual machines per, and run fine. Uh, Dedicated storage, we went to an Equalogic uh, 6500. It's 48 terabyte uh, with on a RAID 10, so it gave us 22 usable storage, 22 gig or terabyte usable storage. Uh, two broker servers still, uh, the same one sitting beside the same F5 for an active active redundancy. Uh, and the one thing, uh, right now we have a, uh, the, we keep the server team and the VDI team ESR servers completely separate. So they have their servers, we have our servers. So, and they have their server team, VDI team. So our distribution centers, uh, we're all based out in St. Louis, so that's where everything sits. We have uh, one distribution center in Tejon Ranch, California, that has 122 virtual machines going to them. Uh, Chino, California has 38. Tennessee has 115. Wisconsin has 116, Sykes to Missouri has 55, and Perth, Canada has six. And like I said, all of those are 100% virtual. There's not a desktop in any of them, and everything runs back in St. Louis. So throughout all our distribution centers, uh, in 2010, we're scheduled to have 165 million pairs of shoes come in and out. Everything's being scanned, everything's checked, all office workers, everything is all through virtual. Yeah. Um, most of them are uh, two T1 lines. Uh, I think Tejon Ranch is three T1 lines. Uh, and then we have a, a DSL for backup. But um, So this is actually a, a distribution center out of Tejon. It was brand new whenever we built it, so it was 100% VDI from the get-go. Uh, as you can see, this is a, a receiving line, so everything in there. We, have, we used Wise Thin Clients for this one. Um, everything's virtual. There's a packaging station, everything's, everything's virtual. So uh, there's not a desktop in the whole place. It did make it nice for, because in, uh, with VDI, your desktop follows you. So you can be sitting in your desk in the office and log on, and if there's a, a problem out on the floor, you can simply sign off of the thin client, walk a half mile to wherever the problem is, and if it's you know right next to the, the so if you're on station one, and someone has a problem on station two, you can walk up to station one, log on, you get your desktop, help the guy out, sign off, walk back to uh, your desk, and log back on, you don't have to worry about your machine going down or anything. So, 
something that they like. Um, so pains and benefits that we learned along the way. Um, because we did this uh, whenever it was kind of first starting, uh, we kind of had to figure out a way of, you know, how, how do you create a thousand desktops for a thousand users and able to delete those thousand desktops and have the uh, end users log in the next day and not really realize that their desktop had been deleted and recreated and stuff. So we kind of had to figure all that out um, and work along or figure it out as we went along. Um, and what we found out, what we did was uh, with roaming profiles, folder redirection, uh, we got that working really well. We worked with our networking team really close of getting all our VLANs and, and uh, stuff configured to work on the WAN and the LAN and stuff. Um, we uh, went through many different thin clients. So I, on my desk at home, I got tons of different models. We ended up going with Weiss. Um, just for, for us at the time, that model seemed to fit us. We went with the V10L, which is the thin OS, and moved the current, recently we moved over to the C10. Um, virus scans was another pain. Uh, what we found is that you, know, on a, you have a regular desktop, you do a virus scan and it has one CPU, one desktop. Whenever you are running uh, in a virtual environment, you have a thousand machines sitting on one SAN that's all virtual. If the virus scan kicks off at the same time, it kind of causes problems. So, is that real time scanning or? Uh, well, so what we did is uh, we found out that during the, 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 the scan, that was a problem. So initially, we uh, uh, kind of turned off full scans. And then later we had an issue where we um, uh, we had it fixed, and then or in the initial uh, deployment, probably a year and a half later, uh, about 200 VMs got spun up, and for some reason they didn't get moved over to correct OU. And at night, um, around eight o'clock, everything started crashing, and no one really knew why. And what it was is that. Uh, there was they were pushing an update out to them, and it was pushing an update out to all of them. So it could have been you know just a six meg update being pushed, but times a thousand, it uh, saturated the pipe. So you mentioned that you uh, worked with the networking team on different VMs. Are you part of the desktop team or the server team? Well, that's a great question, and you're going to get a card. <laughs> um, I worked with him. Um, so if there was ever one thing that I could really stress about if you're ever going to you know, go down this path and, uh, is whenever you first implement or whenever you, you talk to your bosses or whenever you decide to put in a, a virtual desktop environment, take someone from the server team. Take someone from the desktop team. Pull them out and create your own virtual uh, or VDI department because all the servers are on the back end, all the SANs on the back end, the networking, whatever. That's server realm. Once you spin up a, or clone up a, an XP image or a Windows 7 image, that's a desktop. Um, I come from a server background whenever we started it. I spun up an XP machine. It took me about, what, 20 minutes. I called it a day. That was good. Um, my desktop engineer, it took him a week to actually get a, a golden image out. And uh, I thought I was much more proficient than he was. But um, so... It, by bringing those two in, it makes it to where you have you know, the server team and the desktop team. You no longer have to go to the server team all the time and say, hey, we need more. Uh, we need another ESX server, or we need this, or we need that. And vice versa, if you're on the server team, you don't have to keep going to the, the desktop team and, and uh, do whatever they do and ask for questions. Yeah? Uh, what did you do with the uh, profiles and data? So, bring it all the way back? No, so, so we do, uh, yeah, well, everything resides in the same. Uh, data center. So uh, we do roaming, profi roaming profiles and folder redirection. So all the user data and everything is actually being folder redirected. So like my documents and everything actually sits on a file server in the same data center. Nope. I see about a month ago we, we thought that. So we kept we always tried to keep you know desktops clean. We kept telling people don't save anything to your desktops. You know just make shortcuts. Put them over there. Come to find out, my desktop, I had uh, downloaded Adobe Master Suite collection, and it went to my desktop, and I, didn't, I was running it for a month and jumping around different virtual machines and didn't realize it. So I had a 1.2 gig file on my desktop. It was being redirected. It wasn't actually being copied down. So it, uh, it redirects that part. 
So by doing that, you could run pretty much whatever. Uh, yes and no. Uh, uh, whenever, whenever you log, right now, no, no, I'm sorry, we don't. Uh, they're, they're persistent profiles. Whenever we, but we do try to, whenever you log out, we do try to clear it off the machine. Um, so uh, our desktop engineer ran a script and stuff, and so whenever you log off, it goes in and wipes it out. But with 4.5, we're going to make it to where you revert the snapshot back, so it's a fresh machine every time anyways. Now, your profile itself, sitting on the file server, that stays, stays where it is. Yep. How did you find to make your choice of the Y's? The, you're the C10 over... Uh, you mean, why didn't we go with the P20 and the C10? Um, like I said, I'm not affiliated with anyone, so I don't care. Um, at the time, whenever uh, the C10 came out, we met with the Weiss uh, people. They came down and uh, at the time said, you know, the C10 has graphics chip in it, um, has a bigger CPU, and eventually, you know, it'll have PCIe and integrated with it. So that was, hey, great, you know, we'll get that. We'll be able to run Windows 7. We'll have to be able to do Arrow, all well, that stuff that you can do on a regular desktop. Still waiting for that part. So, but anyways. Um, that's why we went with the C10. Uh, so, you know, maybe eventually. And yes, you get a card now. Sure. No, not at all. You tell people you're getting a virtual machine, they love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, actually, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute. Um, but I will answer that. Yes, it's 25 percent. I was 20. Um, so uh, uh, user experience. Um, uh, there are uh, things that we learned. Um, reteaching or eliminating bad habits. So people who have desktops, you know, they leave them up and running all the time. You can go to them. The last time they restarted their desktop was 120 days ago. Uh, whenever you're in a pooled environment and, you know, there's 100 virtual machines uh, and, you know, you log on one day, you get machine 68. You log on the next day, you get machine 32. Well, whoever had machine 68, you know, if, if you never log off that machine, it stays up there. And with virtual machines, it's, it's best to restart them every day. So it's just little habits that you've got to teach your end users, you know, to break that habit and, hey, refresh your desktop every day because you are sharing it with 100 other people. Um, the shared SAN storage, uh, kind of talked about a little, a little bit. Uh, what we saw was, you know, it, I'm not saying it didn't work. Whenever we were hooked up to it, we were on an EMC, we were on fiber channel disk. Uh, it worked great. And it was just that for some reason, you know, during the day, whenever something would kick off a backup for whatever reason, and it took us a while to figure it out. Um, the end users would, it would slow down or it would, you know, bring everything kind of to a screeching halt and they don't really like that. Um, something I always kind of joke about, and I know it's stupid, but uh, on a desktop, if a server goes bad or, you know, or, or the network goes down or something like that, worst case scenario, your end user can play solitaire. Whenever they're on a virtual desktop, if the network goes down or if the SAN goes down or whatever, they're just staring at a blank screen. But their phone still works. So... They're the first ones to call you. They're the first ones to notice. And, and they will notice if anything slows down, if it's not performing correctly. Once again, because it's not a desktop, it's a virtual machine, everything gets blamed on virtual or on VDI. Are you talking about shared or dedicated storage? Are you talking about different types of desktops or with servers versus desktops? You mean, so servers being on, so servers would be on one SAN. VDI would be on another SAN. Air conditioner just kicked in. <laughs> That's why I was sweating up here. It's not because I'm nervous. Um, so the benefits is that you know you can replace a, a, a desktop now. Uh, you know, uh, within seconds, really. Um, you can take it from Windows XP to Windows 7, and all you have to do is log off, log back on, and, and you're on Windows 7. Or any time that you want to refresh an application, you know, you can, uh, you can. So what we do is we have uh, uh, basically 100 virtual desktops for one department. Um, then we named them, you know, 
A and B, and then so we'd spin up B, have them, we may spin up 10 or 5 or whatever, have them test it out. Once they sign off on it, we'll actually clone it out 100 times, have them log off, log back on, and then once everybody's off of A, we'll just delete A. So kind of rolling through, it, it becomes to the end user, they don't really notice that they've switched desktops, um, and other than that it's either updated or works better or whatever. No, we did. We had them on different LUNs. We had them on different, uh, uh, hold on, my, my, the manager of my server team is right there, and I bet he can answer it. It was more, uh, why, why did we choose to not put it on the same LUN or, or whatever, you know, why did we choose to, to go with a completely different SAN? Right, so a completely different LUN, completely different everything. Yeah, so they're, we're on, VDI is on their own SAN. And like I said, we went with the Equalogic SAN, so it wasn't like, I mean, we went with Equalogic, um, the 6500, uh, do what? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's a much cheaper SAN as far as price-wise, but whenever we put it in, it ran uh, the same or outperformed the EMC on Viber Channel. Um, now, I'm, Grant, that's kind of unfair because this was brand new, just running uh, you know, VDI, and that was already loaded, but even to this day with 1,200 virtual machines on it, it's still kicking and runs great. And actually, we're going to tap into it here in a minute and create a lawn and play around and you can look at the performance on it. So I'm going to dedicate SAN, PCIP. Um, oh, so you were uh, uh, in user experience and stuff like that. Um, so whenever we decided to completely convert the call center, so we had our test environment, we had about our, our proof of concept, you know, and, and kind of building this thing out in the beginning. We had about 30 virtual machines in that department, and they were working fine, but they were the first ones to go. So they went through the pains of the SAN, they went through the pains of networking, any other things that we had to tweak out. So once we got everything worked out, run our own SAN stuff, we came back to the department and said, hey, everything's working great. We're going to convert your entire department over to VDI. Well, by that time, you know, kind of words already spread. You know, it's like, oh, you don't want to go to VDI. If this is the end users, you know, talking amongst one another. It's like, you don't want to go to VDI. You do want to do this because it's not as good or whatever. So we were like, okay, well, we took uh, two brand new Dell 360s and configured them with the exact same image as what our virtual machines are running on. And we gave them to five users. So we had two physicals, three virtuals, gave them to five users, let them run for three weeks. And at the end of the three weeks, their department crunched the numbers, not us. And what they came out with was the VDIs outperformed the physical desktops 30 seconds faster per call per user. So they multiplied that throughout the entire department, and it came out to the equivalent of two employees' salaries. So that more than enough paid for all the new equipment and everything that we needed to convert that department. So that kind of right there proved to the managers and directors that, okay, VDI does work. Now, to answer your question on end users, do they, you know, still complain or whatever because it's not as rich as a full desktop? You know, you don't get arrow, you don't get this, you don't get that. Um, right now, yes. Uh, with View 4.5 coming out, with Windows 7 coming out, um, it's a lot better. Uh, Performance-wise, you, you know, video-wise, everything. You can go from a Windows 7 machine to a Windows 7 machine, which I'll talk a little bit about that, and you can get arrow, you can get full high def video, you can get flash, you can get everything. So, uh, so actually RDP, um, you get arrow with RDP, with, with one monitor. Uh, with two monitors, you lose RDP. Uh, with PCOIP, doesn't matter, you don't get arrow. PCOIP does not do arrow, but RDP does. And the Teradici guys can explain why, because I asked them that yesterday. 
but I'm not going to repeat it because I didn't really don't know it that well. Um, so what we do is whenever we uh, create a a, uh, an, uh, a new template, and because I'm a customer and all that stuff, and um, whatever you hear a, a, a Dell rep or a VMware rep or, or uh, someone um, come up and you know they talk to you about VDI and they talk to you about oh you can do this and you can you can clone up with 10,000 VMs, uh, you know, and, and you know create an environment with 10,000 VMs and, and provision them and, and you know everything else. Well, first of all, how many people have a department that has 10,000 of the same desktop throughout? So I mean, our our company, you know, 100 maybe is uh, our largest you know department with that would just take one image, and if it was 10,000. Okay, so fine, you have 10,000 virtual machines, you can get 100 virtual machines per ESX server on a 710. Um, that's uh, 100 ESX servers. Uh, if they're the 2U rack mount, you have uh, six cables coming out for storage, vMotion, and service console, and four data ports, that's 600 going to your Cisco switch. And then for your data connection, you have 200 going to your 3750s, which is, so now you need 10 3750s and 600 ports on a Cisco switch, plus 100 710s, plus everything else that goes with it, just run your 10,000 desktops. Now, if you need them, that's great. But just, you, you know, know the math whenever you're, you're talking about it. So, but, so, if, and if you need it, great. Hey, you have one template that you have to change, and, you know, that's your environment. What we found is uh, we uh, uh, take a department, you know, and there may be 100 users in it, and with that department, uh, you may have three different um, images. You may have a, a kind of a generic image for everybody. You may have an image for your admins and an image for your managers or, or whatever. But it still works out because now you have one template that you're making the change on and cloning that out 70 times or 50 times, and it's still a lot easier than managing 70 desktops. So... Just something to think about whenever you're architecting. It's not, hey, I can make one image for all my employees throughout. It's not, that's not really reality. Um, yes? Sorry. That's all right. You, don't, you only get one card. <laughs> no, I know. Right, but you run it in a test lab, right? You run it in a test lab, right? No, I do all the Okay. So, but what we're driving is one image, and then virtualized apps. No, and that's great. And that's true. What he was saying is that, you know, they have one image, and they virtualize all the apps, and, and, and it does work. Um, in our environment, uh, we can't virtualize every app. So... So with that being said, and, uh, you know, we like to keep our, our templates separate. You know, I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying this is what we did. All right, I won't. Yeah, yeah, what did I miss? Um, so this is kind of where we're going with it. Uh, v-cloning, um, back in the beginning, we don't do a lot of v-cloning right now because we're on 3.1, uh, and v-cloning was, I know it's link cloning now, but v-cloning... Uh, was still new, and I wasn't willing to bet my job on vCloning. So we do full 10 gig images throughout in Vue 4.5. Uh, very comfortable with it. Uh, I have production users on our release candidate that I'm doing it with, and it works great. So we will be going toward a, a more link cloning uh, in the future. The other thing was is that uh, licensing cost for link cloning was more expensive than our sand space. So it made more sense to do a 10 gig image on the, the 6500 than what we could, uh, it was cheaper to do that than it was to buy the licensing for link cloning for all the desktops. But moving over to 4.5 and Windows 7, you have a little bit bigger of an image, so it makes more sense now to go with link cloning. Pros and cons, kind of what I talked about. Um, also with uh, link cloning, the pros is that Every time an end user logs off, it can either revert back to a snapshot or it can be deleted and spun up a lot more quickly. So that saves on 99% of our calls that we get now are images that weren't refreshed and an end user can't connect up to it, which all we do is log in, find out the virtual machine, reset it, they log back in. 99% of our calls. In 2009, there's only two of us, by the way, that are in our entire VDI department, and we handled 1,200 desktops. 
and in 2009, we got called twice for after hours, you know, on the weekend or whatever, which isn't bad. And I think those were just, you know, log in, reset the, their virtual machine. That was it. I mean, as long as everything's running in the back end, pretty much works. Um, disaster recovery. Uh, I, I've been to a couple, what I do, and, and now that I've been to a couple of other sessions, may change what I do. Um, but really, as long as your templates are backed up, and, and stuff, you're, you're deleting your virtual machines every night anyway, so as long as your templates are backed up that you've created for the departments, as long as the user data is backed up, but that's on the file server, which that's the server team's responsibility, not yours. Um, as long as that's all backed up and, and good to go, you're recreating your virtual machines anyways. So there's not a lot, there is and there isn't, I mean there's a lot of things you can do with disaster recovery and stuff, but right now that's what we're doing. Like I said, I, after seeing all the sessions here, we may change some things up. Um, this is a SAN HQ. It's a product that comes with Ecologic uh, that really lets you look into the SAN, kind of see what's going on, see your read writes, see your I.O., see all that stuff. This is just a screenshot. Um, we're going to look at the real thing here in a minute, so I'm just going to blow past that one. And getting ready to do the demo. Um, initially, I wanted to log in uh, to our environment home, which I still am, uh, and I do the everything from beginning to end, as in creating a LUN on the SAN, attaching that LUN to an ESX server, creating some virtual machines on the LUN that we just created and logging into the virtual machine at the very end. Still we'll do some of that, but because of the network connection that we have here, it, I'm not able to do it like I wanted to. So that being said, um, or because of that, while we're looking at stuff, if anyone has any questions, raise your hand. We can actually look at some, after we get to it, not yet. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. Uh, sure, so the question is, do we have any users that have to install specific applications on their virtual desktop? Uh, yes, we do. Um, and how we handle that is, if it's like a developer or if it's somebody that has to have a specific application to them, we'll either thin app it or we'll give them a one-to-one -one machi virtual machine. And whenever we do that, we say, it's a one-to-one, -one. here it is, it's your image, it's not gonna get updated, it's treated like a desktop. Uh, if it's something that, you know, an end user does come, the first thing we say, is it something that needs to be, is, is it there a business case to give it to everybody in your department in that, that you're in that pool of? And if it is, well then we'll create a new image and give it to everybody. If it's just you that need it, then we'll either thin app it or give you a one-to-one. -one. Yep. Why view over Citrix? Well, because otherwise I'd be at the Citrix event, not here. <laughs> um, so, uh, two and a half. Uh, all righty. Um, so, before I came to Brown Shoe, I was a consultant, and I went around and, and, and installing uh, different proof concepts for different companies with Vue and Citrix and, and a couple other different ones. And for whenever I, I, I was a consultant whenever I came to Brown Shoe, and then I ended up staying, um, we looked at them all, and Vue was more, uh, not simple, but more... Uh, yeah, it, it, it was, to be totally honest, it took me an hour to two to install Vue and have it up and running. It took me two and a half days to get Citrix up and running. Now, that may be because I wasn't that good, I don't know, um, with Citrix, but, uh, and I'm sorry, Citrix engineer could have done it in a day and a half. But it was just that simplicity of, it, and it did everything we needed. It worked. Um, and, you know, ESX was running on the back end, so that's why we went with it. Uh, a little bit with the USB redirection and with printing, we do it all within uh, uh, group policies and, and scripts. We're not doing any of the thin print stuff that they've been talking about. But now that it's out there and in 4.5, we probably will look at some of that and play around with it. But most of it's done in, in uh, uh, logon scripts. So this is uh, view 4.5. This is actually um, a live that I'm not logged into anymore. 
Now in 3.1, this would take a while, but. If anyone's ever ran view 3.1, that took a long time. <laughs> so, uh, so this is uh, view 4.5. Um, as you can see, I already have some out here that are you know created and whatnot. Um, this one here is actually one of them. This is what I was going to do my demo in. Um, connection, you know, we'll see how good it is. Uh, this is our production. Uh, Virtual Center. Um, let's see, go here. See how many we got today. Come on, refresh. Which tier of the license is um, uh, Both the 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 plus and the the enterprise plus and the enterprise. Whoever has that. Yeah. Yeah. So 1,004. So it fluctuates. Um, anytime, you know, I mean, there's 1,004 today, but if they, if they come up and say, hey, we're going to do a training, we need a training image by tomorrow, uh, we need 200, which since we have 150 seats, actually I guess it would be 150. Um, I'll spin up 150 machines. So it fluctuates anywhere between 1,200 and 1,000. This is low. Um, I'm in the process of cutting over and, and uh, to other ESX servers and getting ready for review 4.5. So I've kind of gone in and cleaned up and, and got rid of what I needed and what wasn't being used. So on our SAN and our environment right now, we're running 1,004 virtual machines. On a particular ESX server, this is a 710. Um, and there is 105 virtual machines on that one. And there's a CPU and memory usage on it. Really? No questions? Okay, yes. Eventually, yeah. Uh, and it'll probably be more than that. How many? What's the number of that? How many users? Uh, around 5,000 plus. And then eventually we'll do our stores. Um, right now, we eventually, initially, we were going to uh, run all our stores on, on uh, VDI, but not all of them had the greatest uh, internet connection. So it kind of was unfeasible to do that. So they're actually running the Weiss V90, uh, Windows XP embedded, which eventually later will convert over. But the Weiss V90 is what they're using. Uh, so what he was asking is uh, uh, the people that we're getting ready to convert, uh, will we take away their PCs and give them thin clients or whatnot? So. With experiment with everything, um, it made sense to get thin clients, you know, on the distribution centers and whatnot. For right now, because we are we just bought the PCs, or you know, the PCs are still good. Um, taking a, a, a regular desktop, you can install Windows 7 on it, strip everything out, uh, lock it down, put the view client on there, and then go from that Windows 7 machine to a Windows 7 machine virtual, and you get the best experience. And we only have to pay the Windows license; we already own the desktop. Whenever that breaks, we may replace it with a, a, a thin client. Uh, if you have the the, the subscription, the uh, you only have to pay for one license. One hundred seven, one hundred seven. You only pay for one. At least that's my understanding right now, and that's talking with quite a few people. Enterprise. Yeah. So enterprise. If you have a Windows Seven machine, and you're logging into a Windows Seven machine, you're only paying for one Windows license. If you have SA. Right, but the Windows 7 image that's on the desktop is locked down and you make it to where they really can't do anything with it. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's not a flawless thing. You know, we haven't done it yet, so I don't really have all the logistics of that really worked out. But it also makes it to where the end user gets the best uh, possible uh, uh, desktop or virtual desktop for right now. And, you know, we already own the machines. Right. Right, exactly. Um, 
Let's see. This is uh, what I was talking about on the SAN. So this is SAN HQ. So you're able to look in here, and this is all real time. Uh, you can see the uh, the reads and writes on each of the LUNs. Each of the LUNs are 500 gig LUNs. Uh, because it's a, a 48 terabyte or 48 uh, one terabyte disks in there, and they're all rated. Uh, each 500 gig LUN is around 48 spindles. So we get to utilize 48 spindles for every LUN that we use. Yeah? Just going back to the desktop real quick, I'm in the same position. Was there any study on like maybe energy savings versus going to the thin line versus staying with your disk or your desktops per? Actual studies? No, but I am going to say that, yeah, thin client uses less energy than a full desktop. But, um, Whenever you're talking, you know, it depends on how many, you know, what, what's the, the, me going and asking, you know, the purse strings on, hey, we want to buy all these thin clients because we're going to save energy and we want to throw away all these new computers that you just bought. I no, can I pretty much guess what they're going to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, for right now, that's, that's what, that's what I'm going to, to, to fight for whenever, you know, we, we convert in any other department at our home office. Now, if it was a remote office, I don't want to go out there and replace a desktop every time. I'd rather just send a thin client out and, and be done with it. And, and the thin client model works great. I mean, we have a, you know, all our distribution centers are running off of, you know, I mean, they have a problem. We just send a thin client out. They plug it in. Actually, they already have extras there. They just, you know, take the one out, plug it in. They log in. They're good to go. So, um, so this is SAN HQ for the Equalogic. Uh, so you can go through, you can actually look at all the ports, you can look at all the IOs, you can really you know, dive, deep, dive deep into it to uh, uh, actually see what's going on within your environment. Um, see, I should, since I have somewhat of a good connection, see if I can do this as I say that. So this is uh, our SAN, and there's all the LUNs. We have a 20.8 terabyte uh, usable storage on a RAID 10. Um, this is running everything right now. And this is kind of what I was going to do in the demo, is uh, create a volume and attach it to an ESX server and stuff. So uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, and one thing that we really liked about the, the Equalogic is that uh, I no longer, I'm not a, a SAN expert. I'm not, you know, certified in EMC. I'm not, you know, any of that stuff. But this makes it to where I, you know, uh, can go in here real easy and... Uh... Yeah, thank you. So easy a caveman can do it. Appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah. Um, these are a little... Uh, uh, Kind of the, the first one is a warning. So if it does fill up over 95% uh, because I thin provisioned it, it'll send you an email warning. And then this is where you can actually set the, the thin provision and how much you want it to create right off the bat. I'm going to delete this as soon as I, I get home, so I don't really care. Uh, I do, however, have to come back over here and get an ISQ in name. Let's see. I feel like whenever I'm doing this, I got so many people watching me. Yeah, uh, and that's it. So I just created a 200 gig one, and I already attached the ISQ name into this other server, so I can come back over here. Maybe. Um, do a rescan on him, and I'm just going to kind of talk about it, and we can go into it. Uh, I also want to get to where uh, we can. Uh, clone out. I'm sure everybody wants to see what View 4.5 looks like and how you can clone machines. You don't really need to see uh, how I attach a LUN to an ESX server. Unless you want to. But that was pretty much it. I'll run a rescan on that. I'll come up here to uh, storage, add storage, name it, come back to a rescan, and it's there. And then kind of add it to all the other ESX servers, and I'm ready to go. So that's pretty much how easy Equalogic is to add a LUN to, uh, to a server. So over here, 
uh, if you or to create uh, virtual machines. Um, and like I said, this is a this is my test environment because it's v4.5, but it is attached to the same SAN as everything. So uh, automated pool next floating next. I am going to do view composer. Um, give it a name. Allow users to reset their desktop is kind of important um, one to use whenever you have you know a large environment because it allows the end user if for some reason they try to log on and, and it makes a halfway connection or something. Uh, it allows the user to go in and actually reset the desktop, and that actually sends the signal back to Virtual Center and resets that desktop and releases it from whatever, and then they're able to log on. If that's not checked, you get a lot of calls. Well, you get calls whenever they can do it. Um, so allow the user to reset the desktop, delete, refresh. Um, I do more of a refresh just because whenever you delete, if you're doing a regular sysprep, it takes a while for it to run through everything and do the actual sysprep. If you're just doing the refresh, it just reverts back to the original snapshot. Next. Um, the disposable disk. Someone had a question? I thought I saw a hand go up. Um, the, the disposable disk is uh, uh, with this. Um, it basically, uh, uh, whenever you do the refresh, it disposes of the, the page file and, and the, the temp file. So it makes your refresh go a little bit faster, from what I understand. And number, anyone? How many? Three. Okay. How about ten? Can we do ten? Um, So this is a snapshot. So whenever you do the link cloning, you have uh, your, your regular image, take a snapshot of that. So that's a snapshot going into the folder. I only have one folder for this particular one. So whenever you do this, it does have to copy that full virtual machine or repli a replica of that virtual machine over to the data store. Uh, I've already have some on this one, so it's not going to do that. But just so you know, whenever, if you were to choose multiple data stores, it would copy a replica of that virtual machine to each data store. Now, there is a way that if, if to do it, uh, if you have solid state, they were saying, you know, they recommend not to do that and actually just redirect the the replica to another data store and your virtual machines are to another one, but I don't have any solid state right now, so. Um, next, and this one, this is production, so bear with me. It takes a little while for it to, it's not a test server or test bed, it's actually production, so it takes a little while to. Uh, that's right, yeah, I don't have to type in the OU and, and do all that stuff, I actually browse now and and uh, put it in. Yeah. Uh huh. In two of the offices, we have F5s, and in the rest, we have uh, river, riverbed, riverbed, and it didn't make a difference or help out. Yeah. Uh, Correct. Sorry, I just want to be a little careful on that one. I don't know why. Um, so you can do the quick prep or sys prep. Uh, you know what? I want to do quick prep. They said earlier it was faster. Uh, whenever I do this, we have a lot of things that are in our sys prep that actually runs a couple uh, scripts and whatnot, so 
normally in our environment we would run sysprep. Um, I haven't messed a lot with sys with quick prep, but everything that I've heard here, it's you know works fine with the SID and, and everything. So we'll do that for the sake of time right now and finish. And uh, we can go back over here. We can actually watch them be created. So here's a folder that I created, and here in a little bit you start seeing them pop up. So while that's doing that, any questions or anything? Yes? You mentioned the antivirus storms. Yes. What brought it? Were you using it before, or were you headed into that? Currently, we use Symantec. Um, and I know that you know they're, they're working on stuff to, to make it to where you can actually put it a, a put it on the ESX server and actually run it from there and not put it on the, the virtual machine anymore. And that's the way we will be going, uh, just right now, that, that's not out yet, so. So there they go, you can kind of see them going in real time. And like I said, this is on our production environment at home, so. Any other questions? Uh, so, for the most part, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, they're able to come in, do their job, do their, you know, and, and go home. Um, they complain whenever, uh, uh, you know, something goes wrong, whenever they can't get logged in for some reason. Uh, most of the time, nine times out of ten, it's, that's the user error, or the reason why they can't get logged in. Um, because they didn't, you know, refresh their desktop, or, you know, it's been on for 30 days or whatever, and, and for some reason it can't make that connection. Um, there was something I was going to say to that. Uh, something that, that if, if you do put a VDI environment in your infrastructure, it will expose any flaws. So uh, DNS, it'll, I mean, so anywhere from networking, DNS, to SAN, to Active Directory, to whatever. I mean, it will expose anything. So kind of whenever you first start out with this, every department will get involved because you'll be going to them and saying, hey, uh, this isn't working, or this was, you know, this was work this, five years old, or, you know, or whatever, or something was put in what a place and, you know, needs to be taken out. It will, you will, it will, you will expose the weakest point. So good or bad. Um, but for, to answer your question, uh, do the end users really you know, like it? Uh, for the most part, yes. For, uh, I am still you know, fighting to give them the best user experience possible. And with 3.1, it's not there. With 4.5, it's pretty darn close. So does that mean that upper management doesn't use Vue? Uh, some do. Um, my boss runs Vue. Uh, well, see, so upper management sees it as, you know, it's a business, everything, uh, our CIO does. Actually, our CIO just went uh, all virtual and iPad. He got rid of his desktop altogether. Um, so you can see that they're, these are done, so I created 10 virtual machines. Now, I don't think I can look at the console just because of the wireless connection, or the connection that we have here, but... But yeah, uh, the CIO uh, went virtual. Uh, the vice president of our department uh, is virtual now. Uh, my boss has been virtual for two years, um, and you know they see it. They they're not watching YouTube videos and and doing stuff that they shouldn't be. Uh, it's more the the end users that you know will complain on on little things like that, or you know I can't bring in my uh, uh, CD, put it in my disc player, and, and listen to it because I have a thin client. You know, little stuff like that. And because it's VDI, because it's new, it gets blamed for everything. So, yeah. For folder redirection or redirection my documents, desktop, you know, what about application data? What other folder are you redirecting? Or are you redirecting everything you can? Uh, we try to redirect almost everything we could just to redirect it and try to get the best performance possible. Um, but my docs, let's see if I can come in here. Um, yeah, Active Directory, and right now we're on server 2003. Um, and there are products out there, so like AppSense and, and stuff like that. Uh, we looked at AppSense, 
it looks great and everything. We just uh, decided to stick more with Active Directory because we're getting ready to move to 2008 R2 and Windows 7 and stuff, and we kind of want to see what, what that brings to the table first before we make the investment in, in something else. So, right, and that's why we, you know, we knew that we were going to go that route. So that's why we haven't gone with anything. Now I'm not saying that once we do go to that, and you know, if we if it doesn't work the way we wanted to, that we won't go to Absence or or something uh, like it. But uh, right now, it works fine. And every now and then, you know, something happened where we got to you know delete a roaming profile and the user logs in, it's recreated, and we copy over their favorites and anything that was on their desktop and. That's it, and they go back to work. So, yeah. Ah, so if I had to do it all over again, what would I do differently? Ask for more money whenever I got hired. Um, yeah. To do it all. Oh, okay. Uh, we started out with AMD processors, uh, and then went to Intel. I would definitely. Go with the same uh, core or the same chipset throughout, just because now I have two clusters that I can't V motion from one to another and can't you know do that stuff. Um, uh, you know the, the, the things we did, the thing you know we, we changed along. I mean it's been two years, so you know anything that we we did wrong, we've kind of redone. Um, I don't know. You've worked with you've been there the whole time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is Matt Skipton. He was our VMware rep for the whole time that we were implementing it. So he, he got to hear me complain a lot. Yeah, separate sand from the get-go would definitely do that. Uh, now, now, if you're doing a proof of concept, obviously you can't go buy a sand. Um, but you know, do your proof of concept. Make sure it all works. I mean, you know, feasible. I mean, and, and know going in that, okay, you know, if something kicks off, this is going to slow down. And if they know it, then you, you can explain it and they can expect it. So, and then once you get past the proof of concept and they know it works, then think about purchasing a separate SAN. Um, so, uh, anything else? So that's really about it. I mean, as long as you have a desktop engineer. Yes? How much did it cost to create their or um, Great question. Uh, how much did it cost? Basically, what's the cost of everything? Uh, what we found out is it. The first three years, if you're doing a computer refresh every three years, the first three years are a break even for the hard cost. Soft cost, you know, I mean, uh, as you saw in the, or as I was saying in the consumer service area, you know, they got way better performance, you know, 30 seconds per call per user, which kind of paid for that department. That's soft cost, so it's kind of hard to justify that. Um, we no longer have, if someone gets a virus, we no longer have to uh, to do anything. I mean, we just figure out what machine they're on. We tell them to log off. We delete that virtual machine. They log back on. They get a new one. They go back to work. So, and, and that's today with v4.5. If you're doing the pool and, and whenever they log off or disconnect, whatever, it reverts back to the snapshot or it's deleted. The end user can do that. They get a virus. They just power off their thin client. It does a disconnect, deletes it. They log back in. They get a new machine. So you no longer really have to worry about that, um, you know, so there is no more refreshing or installing apps, you know, throughout. So the soft cost, it pays for itself right off the bat. Hard cost, um, after, you know, whenever you would normally do your computer refresh or your desktop refresh, then you'll start seeing the savings. This gentleman here has been waiting. Um, you have users that roam between virtual and physical stations? Yes, I do. <laughs> Yes, um, that's what. So, and I'm not uh, logged on. Uh, I guess I can go down here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So the question was, uh, thank you. Um, do do we have users that are on virtual machines and 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 physical machines that that go from one machine to another machine? To answer that question, we really discourage it. Uh, and in some offices, before we get everything set up, especially. So we had a, a distribution center that they were kind of their own entity before, and they had their own. Um, Act, not Active Directory, but they had their own roaming profile set up, up, up in Madison, Wisconsin. So because they were up there, and uh, if before we converted them, if they logged onto a virtual machine, all their profiles were being copied down to St. Louis. After we converted them, if they then went to a physical desktop, 
all their profiles that were on that physical desktop were now copied down to St. Louis and corrupted their, you know, their profile. So stuff like that that we had to be careful of. And so in that whole migration, we basically said, once you're converted, do not log into another uh, desktop. And we could tell whenever they did, so then you know, we, we didn't really help them out as, right as quickly as we possible because we warned them beforehand. Um, but that was kind of you know the, uh, that's that case scenario. Uh, because I'm in St. Louis and my desktop's in St. Louis, I log on to physical machine, I log on to virtual machine, and yeah, everything. Uh, you know, I mean, all my uh, things that are on my desktop that fo- that's being redirected to it follows me. All my user data follows me. Um, if I have ThinApp uh, going through Active Directory, so you can do ThinApp where uh, through View 4.5 and attach it to a virtual machine or a pool of virtual machines. If you do thin app and attach it through Active Directory, you can do it user-based, where if I log on to this virtual machine, I get that application. I log on to this virtual machine, I get the same, you know, as, as it follows me. So, but you do have to have a license for thin app to do that, so you can't just, yeah. Way in the back. Um, are you doing any shares or, or reservations uh, on the desktop? So basically, so no one will hog the resources. Right now, no. Um, and we've been running it for two years, and we've had SAP developers, we've had uh, designers, we've had call server, consumer service or call center, we've had uh, you know IT, you know, whatever, uh, and haven't had an issue yet. We are using DRS and HA. So it, you know, if, if somebody does start using the resources, it'll you know come back over. And I am over on my time, but we are the last one, so feel free to keep asking questions, I guess, for a little bit. Yeah? So you have an antivirus client on your... All of, the th- all of them do have an antivirus client on the virtual machine itself, but we don't do the full scan, and we push out updates on off hours and stagger them. Would we keep doing it? Uh, probably right now for just political reasons. And, and until you know the, the the new stuff comes out, for, for political reasons, I don't think I can. I'm not high enough up to say, hey, we're going to take off uh, right. antivirus. Would, you? would I? Yes, I would. Uh, only two machines that are being uh, that are reverting back to the original snapshot on log off or, or disconnect. Right. If it's a one to one, or if it's some, if it's a, a pool of virtual machines that I don't. So like our SAP developers, I'm not going to log those off or re- revert them back every day because a lot of them work at 2 in the morning and disconnect from here and then fly home and log back on and they want to, you know, they're still working. I don't want to mess with those. For, you know, call center, yeah, they can, you know, get a new machine every time they log in. So it just really depends on your environment and how you want to set it up. Yes? If, if, if the main image gets affected, that would be my fault. Uh, it's possible, yeah, but I don't get on my main image and go surf the internet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you can't, like, an end, an end user can't log on to their machine and then it somehow creep back and affect the, the template. That, that would be impossible. Well, But he's saying if an end user logs into machine blah, 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 68, that is not going to affect the template. It'd be no different than if you had a machine, you know, a physical machine. One machine is not going to affect another machine unless it got into the network and somehow did that. But yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Do we do any of the so? Do we do any of the group policies for virtual machines? Um, so, we we yes. Uh, and this is kind of where the desktop engineer comes in. Uh, everything that you know, we do all this stuff. Oh, there is. We do use group policies. There is one really important thing that that I want to say that the first thing we did whenever we started this whole thing is we went into Active Directory, created a, an OU, and broke inheritance of everything. So we started from scratch. 
and we only brought over the group policies that we actually had to have, which come to find out it was about six instead of 1,600. Yeah, yeah. So then, but then, yeah, we could tailor fit it, add, add it as we go along, but we added them as we needed. So log on times on a desktop was, you know, maybe 10 minutes, where logging onto a virtual machine is 10 seconds. So that was also nice, you know, right off the bat, someone who goes from desktop to a virtual machine, they log in for the first time, it's, you know, they can actually get in right away. So something that I would highly recommend whenever you do start this path, prove the concept or any, you know, anything else, create an OU, break inheritance, add what you need, start there, start fresh. Um, not, not really, no. Yes? Um, different, different departments can use them. So it just depends on which pool, which department they're in. You know, if they're, uh, if they're more of an SAP developer, or not, not an SAP developer, they're more, you know, the, the IS team or, or whatever, then yes, uh, for like the call center and stuff like that, we block it. I'm ready to start drinking, so. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs>